Today's video is slightly different to what I had initially expected. So my plan was to make a Sapili box, but that didn't quite go to plan. And there are a couple of reasons for that. One, my miter joints weren't massively accurate. And I also had some issues seating the hinges properly, as you'll see from this video. So it's probably worth explaining what I'm doing anyway. So here I'm cutting out the pieces of Sapili that I was going to use to make the sides of the boxes. I still did end up using these, but they didn't work quite as I wanted. So I'm just sanding them here just to remove any sharp edges to them. I used Gorilla Glue here to glue it up because Gorilla Glue would work really well for this. And as you can see I already had a couple of issues with some cracks so I filled those up now. Alright so I'm cutting up the box bottom here. This just required a bit of filing and sanding to get it to what I needed. And then I repeated by using the Gorilla Glue to glue it inside the box. I had planned on doing a really cool top to this box, which would have been a bit like a chessboard pattern. However, this also had some issues with not being able to get the one centimetre squared pieces of wood to all line up nicely and not have loads of cracks. So as you can see, I tried to measure them as accurately as I could and I used my engineer's square to help me with that. Not every project goes to plan and this one didn't. So it's important to work out what to do when projects don't work. So I could have given up on this project. It would have been much easier to just give up and move on to a new project. But I chose not to because it's important when you do woodworking to think of new ways to do things and use your initiative to help you with that. So the hinges didn't work very well and neither did these one centimetre squared um, box lid. So what I decided to do was just do a simple box top. So you get the general idea of what it should have looked like here. So right now I'm just measuring it all up and then I'm chopping the top of the box off. And then this is me making the mitered spline joints. Now again, these didn't particularly work as well as they should have and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is I was using a hacksaw because I don't have a really fine tooth saw to do this with. Now the purpose of a mitered spline joint is to enhance the aesthetics of this project but using a hacksaw isn't the best option for this and the veneer I had was really good quality veneer so I know it was down to my precision as well. If I had measured these a bit better the end project would have also come out better. So it's all about taking the time and learning where you've gone wrong on a project and working out how you can fix that. So I still went along with it and I just glued them in, just so I could at least get an end result. As you can see, I'm still gluing in these one centimetre squared blocks of wood, because at this stage of the project, I didn't know they weren't going to work. And I'm using my belt sander here to clean up the box because it already had some issues with the mitered joints not lining up nicely. I then decided to hand sand the wooden box because the box lid and the actual box didn't line up perfectly and I wanted to achieve a nice flat surface between the two. So I'm measuring up here for the hinges and this needs to be done really accurately and I think in my case I needed to be even more accurate. I then decided to use the Dremel to cut out the recess for the hinges. I found using a Dremel a fairly easy process to achieve this recess for the hinges. However the main problem I encountered with these hinges was they were just too small to use and they became incredibly fiddly to try and fit. Also, the screws I was using were very, very small, so it made this whole process very time consuming and very difficult to achieve a nice fit. Unfortunately, with hinges, once you've cut out the recess, you can't really add that material back, it doesn't work like that. So I had to find another way to put the box lid on and still get an end product. At this stage, I was still trying to fiddle around, trying to get them to fit up, but it just did not work as I wanted it to. So I decided I was going to have to make another method to attach the box lid. 
So in the end, I just decided to curve the underneath where the hinges originally would have been and curve the top part of the box lid where the hinges would have been. This wasn't quite what I anticipated the box to look like. If I've learned one thing from this box project, it's to not give up. Projects won't always end up the way you envisioned them, but it's important to move on and to learn what your errors were and to fix them for the next time you make that same project, or a different project for that matter. Thank you for watching, guys.